The confirmed number of cases of the coronavirus in Los Angeles County today comes to 43,052. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 2,049. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 344, with total confirmed deaths at 44. We anticipate those numbers to increase as the last 24-hour operating period is updated with the county. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I am Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Saturday, May 23rd. Thank you for joining us at this special hour. For this weekend only, we're broadcasting COVID-19 Today at 4 p.m. due to the extended length of the City Council meeting replay, which begins at 10 a.m. and again at 6 p.m. Just in time for the Memorial Day weekend, Los Angeles County announced its latest openings. Beach bike paths are now open in Los Angeles County, offering one more recreational activity you can do outdoors. Along with surfing, swimming, running, and walking, now you can add bicycling to that list. Beach bathrooms will be open as well, and the Torrance Beach parking lot just opened this morning. Now, there are safety protocols the community should keep in mind when enjoying the outdoors. A face mask or covering must be worn by everyone except for children under two years old. Practice social distancing and stay at least six feet away from others outside of your family unit. Gathering of any kind is strictly prohibited, including athletic competitions, youth camps, and recreational programs, as well as no gatherings among friends. No chairs, coolers, canopies, or grills, and no volleyball yet on the beach. While shopping as we know it is still not back, shoppers can now enter some retail establishments to pick up at the front of the store. Los Angeles County is opening indoor shopping malls for curbside service beginning today. Customers are reminded they must adhere to safety protocols, including practicing social distancing and wearing that face covering. Businesses must also be in compliance with the conditions laid out for curbside pickup. Malls are advised to create clearly marked curbside or outside pickup points to avoid any confusion. Retailers have also been given the green light to take orders and deliver the goods to the public outside of the mall to their cars. Well, speaking of shopping, more retailers are showing major signs of impact from the economic recession. Victoria's Secret announced the company plans to close 250 stores in the U.S. and Canada, and Bath & Body Works will close an additional 50 stores nationwide. L Brands is the parent company of both of these companies and said their sales declined 37% in the second quarter. They joined Pier 1 Imports, which announced plans to shut all of their remaining 540 stores, as well as JCPenney, who is in the beginning stages of filing for bankruptcy. They joined clothing chain J. Crew, who was one of the first to file early into the health crisis. All of the stores mentioned do have a retail location in Torrance at the Delamo Fashion Center. And with graduations and birthday parties on pause during this health crisis, the county is making it officially acceptable to have car parades as a way for the community to celebrate these occasions. Whatever the celebration, if you are participating in a car parade, participants must remain in a fully enclosed vehicle and occupants in the car must be members of a single household. Now, if any window is open, the driver and all passengers must have that face covering on. Now, if any organization is thinking of coordinating a large scale parade, they must have a designated person responsible for ensuring compliance with the rules for the parade. This host is responsible for arranging and providing security to address any traffic and safety concerns. They also need to ensure participants practice social distancing and wear that face covering.
The host is allowed to provide a significant document to one vehicle participant at a time, such as a diploma or other paper while wearing a face covering and social distancing. Food is not allowed to be shared or sold during these car parades. One local private school made great efforts to recognize their graduating seniors while practicing safety protocols. That was the school mascot, Levi the Lion, along with head of school, PTO, and ambassador high school staff who visited each of their graduating class of 2020 students. They surprised them with a visit bringing them their cap and gown, along with their lawn sign to celebrate this big achievement. Students were so excited to be able to get recognized in this way. Ambassador High School, located on Maple Avenue in Torrance, is a college preparatory Christian school dedicated to providing excellent education in academics, fine arts, athletics, and leadership. There are less than 100 students in grades 9 through 12 that attend the school. The Torrance Certified Farmers Market was busy this morning as hundreds came out to buy their fresh produce. And many were so excited to see some of their favorite vendors make a return. To provide maximum social distancing, pre-packaged vendors were temporarily located along the parking lot area next to Crenshaw Boulevard. You'll find nearly 30 pre-packaged food vendors selling goods like packaged beef jerky, nuts, bottled drinks, hummus, dried fruits and breads, items already sealed, packaged, and ready to sell. Now, what vendors are not allowed to sell yet are foods prepared on site. Those will be invited to sell at a later time as LA County lifts more restrictions. The Torrance Cares Farmer's Market curbside pickup also continues. Shoppers must place orders by noon the day before in order for produce to be set aside for curbside pickup from 11 a.m. until noon. This service was launched to assist seniors with limited mobility as well as those with underlying health conditions. The Farmer's Market takes place every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Wilson Park. Shoppers must wear face coverings while at the farmer's market and must practice social distancing while shopping. Shoppers are also encouraged to leave family members at home and send just one person per household. Speaking of the Torrance Farmer's Market, did you know that they're one of the many retailers that accept CalFresh cards? Well, during this health crisis, those who've lost jobs or have been financially impacted can get some assistance to ensure food is still put on the table for you and your family. Thanks to the federally funded CalFresh program, all you have to do is submit an application online. It takes about 10 minutes to complete. You will need to submit proof of your situation, a copy of your ID, along with pay stubs or rent receipts. If you are approved, you'll get an EBT card with money to use towards groceries as soon as 30 days from the time you apply. Now, if you need it sooner, you can apply for a three-day expedited service if your household makes less than $150 a month and has less than $100 on hand. Those applicants are also encouraged to reach out to local food banks for immediate assistance. Online, you can find a number of food assistance centers in the South Bay. During the COVID-19 health crisis, recipients will see additional funds put into their EBT account thanks to the Families First Act passed by Congress in March. For more information, you can go to getcalfresh.org. If you own an oversized vehicle, the city is letting residents know that parking violations will return beginning May 30th, a week from today. The Torrance Police Department will provide warnings to violators during this week leading up to May 30th. Now, what's defined as an oversized vehicle is a vehicle or combination of vehicles that exceeds 20 feet in length, 7 feet in width, or 8 feet in height. Oversized vehicles do not include pickup trucks or SUVs, which are less than 20 feet and 82 inches in height. 
This ordinance also applies to all detached trailers or combination of vehicle and trailer. Now, if your new trailer or RV hasn't been registered yet, you are encouraged to register your OV online. Residents can purchase permits, select days of use of permits, cancel use of a permit, or register a guest who may be visiting with an OV. You can find those forms on the city's website. As Memorial Day weekend marks the unofficial kickoff to summer, safety officials are reminding families if your weekend activities include pool time with the kids, then to pay close attention to dangers when in and out of the water. According to the American Red Cross, drowning is a leading cause of death for children. Now, even if your child is a strong swimmer, authorities say they should always swim with a buddy and preferably with a lifeguard or adult present. Designated adults who are supervising children are advised to avoid using alcohol or drugs before or while swimming, diving or watching over as it may impair your judgment or ability to respond quickly in the case of an emergency. While health experts define drowning as trouble breathing after you get water into your airways, sometimes that can also happen while swimming or simply bathing. There's also something called dry drowning or secondary drowning. Now, while those are rare complications, parents should be aware that dry drowning is when breathing in water causes your child's vocal cords to spasm and close up. That shuts off their airways, making it hard to breathe. Signs of dry drowning would be noticed right away, not days later. Secondary drowning is another term used to describe a different kind of drowning complication. It happens when water gets into the lungs and irritates the inner lining of the lungs and fluid builds up, causing a condition called pulmonary edema. You'll likely notice your child having trouble breathing right away and could get worse over the next 24 hours. Officials say while these two rare types of conditions make up only 1-2% to 2 of all drownings, it's a good idea to be vigilant and aware when children are in and around water. Children who are not proficient swimmers should always wear a life jacket. Family members should know what to do in a water emergency, like how to perform CPR or call for emergency help. If you and your family are marking an academic achievement or milestone, there is one place in Torrance that's making sure to provide you with the perfect treat to celebrate. The Torrance Bakery, a family-owned and operated bakery since 1984, has continued to serve the South Bay community even through this health crisis with unique treats and theme-specific pastries. Now they're offering graduation and class of 2020 cookies and cakes. You can order it online as well as calling in the order ahead of time and they'll bring it out curbside. You can reach them at torrancebakery.com. If you're one of thousands who won't be part of a traditional graduation ceremony due to COVID-19, we want to celebrate you and your big milestone. Congratulations to Chapman Hurley. He is a graduating fifth grader at Howard Wood Elementary School. He loves surfing and skating and is a junior lifeguard. He is grateful the ocean is open again. Congratulations to Colin Hurley. He is a graduating eighth grader at Hull Middle School. He is excited to promote to high school in the fall. He loves to surf and hang out with his friends. Congratulations to the Hurley brothers. Congratulations to Leslie Covarubius. She is a graduating senior at North High School. She is the first in her family to be college bound. She is headed to California State University, Long Beach in the fall. Leslie has been an honor roll student since kindergarten all the way through high school. Her family wanted to say how proud they are of her. Congratulations to you, Leslie. Congratulations to all of our graduates, whether it's a preschool promotion or college graduation and every milestone in between. Send us your photo and let us know what school you're graduating from. We'll be sure to share it on our show. Email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. 
Well, before we go, at the end of each program, we like to share your story of how you and your family, friends, and local businesses are all surviving this health crisis. The Old Torrance Neighborhood Association, or the OTNA, is a tight-knit community made up of residents who live in downtown Torrance. And since the start of this health crisis, members have stepped up making monetary donations, food donations, and rallying together to help neighbors and friends who've either lost their jobs or have gotten sick and needed a little helping hand. It's needless to say, I think every neighborhood wishes for a network of do-gooders like this group. Just yesterday, they were able to help three families by dropping off necessities like paper products, diapers, cleaning supplies, and groceries for these families, just because they knew they needed the help. It's moments like these when we hear of how community members show support for one another that you know Torrance really is a unique and special city with residents that truly care. We love hearing these stories, seeing pictures and videos being sent to us, so please keep them coming so we can share your story of how Torrance cares. Email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov if you have any questions or just want to share. Stay informed by signing up at torrentca.gov slash torrentsalerts. Subscribe to City Cable's YouTube channel and be sure to like the city's Facebook page. That is our update for COVID-19 today. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Due to the length of this week's city council meeting, COVID-19 today will broadcast at 4 p.m. on Sunday. So be sure to join Christine Lee as she brings you the latest COVID-19 updates. Please be safe, stay healthy, and thank you for tuning in. We will see you next time.